Okay, taking the infinity is weird mantra and setting that to the side, at least for, uh, for a video or two, I wanna do a few videos on cardinality. And so I wanna just think very carefully about, uh, about cardinality. Cardinality has to do with how many elements are in a set. And so what I wanna do is I wanna start with the following observation. Let's consider, let's consider two sets, uh, say A and B. So A is gonna be the set, say one, four, seven. B is going to be the set, let's say uh, eight and uh, whatever, 10. And I want to think about a function. So uh, I want to think about a function f from A to B. And so I'm going to think about this in terms of uh, these diagrams here, where I'm going to have the domain over here. So A and B. Okay, so A is one, four, and seven, and B is eight and 10. And then thinking about all the different ways that there are to assign elements in A to some element in B really is the same as thinking about all the different functions that you can have. So if you were to have a function, say, where one goes to eight, and uh, just kidding, you can't do that because it's a function if uh, four goes to 10 and seven goes to eight. Okay, that's equivalent to just the function where f of one is eight, f of four is 10, and f of seven is eight. Now, what I want to do is I want to think about what properties can this function have? What properties can it not have? And notice that if there's more elements in A than there are in B, then F cannot be one-to-one. -one. Okay, because we run out of room. It, the only way to be one-to-one -one means that each element in B gets mapped to at most once. And so the only way that that can happen is if there's at least as much stuff in B as there is in A. So F cannot be one-to-one -one if the number of elements in A is greater than the number of elements in B, okay? And by the way, all this discussion about cardinality and so on uh, is gonna start with talking about finite sets. So here we have sets with two, three, five, 100, but a finite number of elements in them. So F cannot be one-to-one -one if there's more elements in A than in B. And likewise, think about any function from B to A. So B is gonna be the same eight and 10. F is gonna be the same one, four, and seven. No function from B to A can be onto because to be onto means that every element in, in the codomain, in this case A, is the image of something. And we're always gonna be missing something. The reason why we're always gonna be missing something is that if there's more stuff in A than there is in B, uh, then we'd need to have some element in B get mapped to two different places, which makes it not a function. So that's, that's impossible. So in other words, F cannot be onto if there's more elements in, um, again, in the codomain let me say it that way, because I now I've switched the role of A and B. So F cannot be onto if um, there are more elements in the codomain than in the domain. Let me say this a slightly different way here. Okay, so let's say, um, Consider a ge just a generic function f going from A to B. If f is one-to-one, -one, so if f is one-to-one, -one, let's think about what that means. That means that, so if f is one-to-one, -one, that means that there's at least as much stuff in the codomain as there is in the domain. So if f is one to one, let me write this a little better. So if f is one to one, then the number of elements in A has to be less than or equal to the number of elements in B. Because if there were more elements in B, f couldn't be one to one. Likewise, if f is onto, 
then the inequality has to go the other way. Then there must be at least as much stuff in the codomain as there is in the domain. And therefore, and the thing that I really care about here is that uh, if F is a bijection, if it's a one-to-one -one correspondence, if it's one-to-one -one and onto, then if A and B are finite sets, And if f is a bijection from A to B, then there must be as, exactly as many elements in A as there are in B. Okay, so that's a very important, uh, very important thing here. And in fact, we can use that, uh, and we can now kind of slightly change or slightly shifting the ground under our feet here. But uh, we can now change the definition of uh, two sets have the same cardinality. So we'll say that two sets. So in general, so when I say in general, I mean not just for finite sets, but um, two sets A and B have the same cardinality So they have the same cardinality if there exists a bijection So if there exists a bijection uh, from a to B. And of course, if there exists a bijection from A to B, then there also exists a bijection from B to A, namely the inverse. So uh, this idea of being a bijection is symmetric. Okay, so this is what we're going to mean when we say two sets have the same cardinality now. And of course, it's the same, we just checked that it's the same for finite sets, is that there's a bijection between them. But that's how we're going to define two sets to have the same cardinality uh, if they're infinite. So that's how we'll make sense of uh, cardinality of infinite sets. So in the next videos, we'll do some examples.